carboxylic acids. Well, again, as with any functional, any um, homologous series, any new family of substances, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, what is the functional group? Every time it's a matter of identifying the particular family, identifying the little group that gives us its character. In the case of these carboxylic acids, we're looking at this functional group. Something written like that, something written like this. It doesn't really matter how it's presented. It's the same thing. Yeah. COOH. What's it called? You might remember that OH was hydroxyl. You should recall that CO was carbonyl. But this is an amalgamation of the two. We're not dealing with two separate function groups. They merge to form a single entity. And so this is called carboxyl. We're looking at the carboxyl group. Carboxyl. C-O-O-H. They're not aldehydes, they're not ketones, they're not alcohols. The carboxyl group is the basis of a family of acids, the carboxylic acids. The next thing we have to ask ourselves is, how do we name these subjects, draw them, recognise them? Let's look at their, their structures and so on. Well, this functional group can only exist at the end of a carbon chain. For example, how about this one? How about, let's take, say, four carbon atoms and the carboxyl group on the end carbon atom, COOH. What name would we give to this molecule? Four carbons, butane. It's a carboxylic acid. We call it butanoic acid. Butanoic acid. Its formula would be C3 H7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then we have COOH. Therefore. However, this could have an asthma. We could put a branch in here. Here's a possibility. We could take our four carbon atoms and arrange them like that. So once again, the most important part of the molecule by far is the functional group. How do we name this thing? When you look at this molecule, cover up the branch. That's the main part of the molecule. Three carbon atoms, propane, propanoic acid. This is first and foremost propanoic acid. It's propanoic acid with a branch, a methyl. It's methyl propanoic acid. Where is it? Well, we could say it's on carbon atom number two, and we could call it two methyl propanoic acid. Although, to be honest, we don't need that number, because let's face it, where else could it be? If it wasn't there, it wouldn't be a branch. So, to be honest, methyl propanoic acid is adequate. What we need to know is, how do we make these things? How do we make carboxylic acids? Well, you might recall, we came across these when we were doing some oxidation chemistry. The story went something like this. Primary alcohol. Oxidise the primary alcohol to get an aldehyde. Oxidise the aldehyde and we get the acid, this carboxylic acid. These can be made either from the aldehyde or directly from the alcohol. Okay, so they're made by oxidation. Now remember, oxidation is the opposite of reduction. So you could get an exam question which asks you what would happen if this was reduced. And of course, if it was reduced, if it was reduced, we'd be reversing the process, going back the way. You don't need to know the chemicals which would do that, but you do have to realise that reduction is the reverse of oxidation. And finally, what else is left? Well, what we really want to look at is what do they do? What's the chemistry of these carboxylic acids? And of course, as the name implies, they're acids, first and foremost. They are acids. They do what acids do, with one proviso. They are weak acids, so they may not pack the punch that bench acids such as hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, or nitric acid may pack, but nevertheless are acids and will take part in acid reactions. Now what do acids do? Here's a typical acid reaction. 
an acid might react, for example, with, say, a carbonate. You might recall from standard grade, take an acid and add it to a carbonate, and one of the products is carbon dioxide. Of course, since we're dealing with an acid, we're bound to produce a salt. And finally, as in most acid reactions, water is produced. Let's take an example. Let's have a look at this. Now, our acid could be, let's take the best known carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid, CH3COOH, ethanoic acid, has this characteristic COOH, the carboxyl group. Now, you might recall that for them to be genuine acids, they would actually have to be dissolved in water. Something that crops up in unit 3 is the fact that acids can only be acids in water because it's only when they're in water that they produce the hydrogen ions which make them an acid. And of course there must be a negative ion to go with that. Let's take a carbonate. What's, there's the best known carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid. And the best known carbonate is probably calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate. If you were to add these together, what would happen? Well, we would see carbon dioxide produced. It wouldn't be produced very quickly because this is a, a weak acid, but it would be produced nevertheless. What would be the salt? Well, let's see. This is ethanoic acid, so the kind of salts it produces will be ethanoates. When an acid reacts, and it doesn't matter which acid, all that ever happens is it loses its hydrogen ions. Any acid does that. This part doesn't change, this is a spectator. So if I take ethanoic acid and it reacts, then this ethanoic ion will change. It's still there, it's a spectator. And it will be teamed up with calcium. Calcium ethanoate. Better be careful here, however. The calcium ion has a 2 plus charge. And so in this compound, the calcium have a 2 plus charge, but the carbonate only has a 1 negative charge. So I'd better do that to be correct. Two negative charges to go with the 2 plus. There'd be water as well. If I've got to balance this, and we better just tidy it up. If I end up with two ethanoates, I must have started with two ethanoic acids in the first place. The point is this it looks complicated, but it's just an acid. It does what acids do. It reacts with a carbonate and its hydrogen ions are removed. Let's take one other example. Suppose we were to add our acid to a metal like magnesium. The magnesium is a pretty reactive metal and will react. What do we get when an acid reacts with magnesium? Well, we'll get a salt. We always end up with a salt if we start with an acid. This is the one acid reaction which does not produce water, it produces hydrogen instead. Let's take a different acid. Instead of ethanoic acid, how about the simplest one of all? The simplest of these acids would be COOH, H. Only one carbon atom. Methanoic acid. Methanoic acid. Plus magnesium. Once again, for this to be an acid, it would have to be dissolved. In the absence of water, it isn't really an acid at all. Only in the water does it have hydrogen ions. What will we get this time? Well, the salt. The salt will be what's left once the acid is reacted. When an acid reacts, as we said before, it loses its hydrogen ions. What are we left with? Methanoic acid, methanoate. The salt will be magnesium, Methanoate. In other words, instead of a hydrogen ion, it's replaced by magnesium ion. Because magnesium ions are two positive and the methanoic ion is one negative, we'll have to do that. I have a correct formula. It looks like we back to front, but that's where we're drawing this. And the hydrogen? Well, the hydrogen gas is where these have gone. H2. We need to balance this. If we have two methanoates, we must have started with two methanoic acids. The point to remember is these are weak acids. They'll react rather slowly, but nevertheless, they'll still do what acids do. Apart from that, is there any other reaction that these take part in you're supposed to know? Well, the answer is yes. One very important reaction. 
you need to know that a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol to form ester. And there's a lot of ester chemistry in this hive course. So that's a very important reaction, carboxylic acid to 